What is going on guys? Thank you for coming back to Cobra TV and this is the first episode of Cobra TV Unlisted. Now this will be able to be found on YouTube and it will also be able to be found in MP3 format so that you can listen to it uh, with a not sucking up so much time or data on your cell phones. So go ahead and pick up some earphones and enjoy. We're going to be tackling No Man's Sky on this first Cobra TV Unlisted, and I'm gonna tell you why this is going on the Unlisted program here. But a quick message to all of the displaced Vine users that are showing up on YouTube. This is a podcast. I've been getting a lot of, uh, I've been seeing a lot of concerns on not only my podcast, but other people's podcasts, complaining about the longevity of the podcast, claiming that not even movies are that long. Oh, man, uh, this is a podcast, so if you're watching on YouTube, I'm probably going to put a little bit of video in here when I'm talking about something uh, that a Facebook user said. But other than that, it's going to just be a picture because this is a podcast. It's not meant for uh, viewing. But YouTube is free, so therefore it's the best place on the Internet to put a podcast, even though it doesn't fit really because YouTube is meant for videos. But most of the no. All of the places on the internet for podcasting actually charges you to upload audio. Now, they offer it free. Uh, Podbeam is free. Uh, SoundCloud is free. But each and every one of the those free podcasting sites actually charge you after you reach a certain time limit or a certain data limit, um, which is just crazy. It's absolutely crazy when YouTube is... 100% free and it's video it's larger files so I'm not sure I understand that now internet uh, there's a, a website called uh, internet archive I do that's this is where I'm uploading um, the podcast that I'm getting the the uh, the file for so it's free but it doesn't have it doesn't have a fan base it doesn't have people going there and searching for podcasts or anything like that so we're going to be linking these podcasts on the Cobra TV GNN website also, the unlisted YouTube video would be will be uh, listed on the Cobra TV GNM website, website as well. If you want to get on the show, add me on LPoly1622. That's L P O L I 1622, and we'll get you on. We'll talk about your blog. We'll talk about your YouTube channel. We'll talk about your WordPress. Or if if you don't have any of that stuff, then that's fine. We could just sit here and talk about gaming. And if you are on the show to talk about your YouTube channel or whatever, um, I would like to have, you know, some chats about games. What's in the future? You know, what got you into gaming to begin with? And then we can, you know, go into talking about what you're planning on for the future with your YouTube channel. But a big reason why some of this stuff is going on the new show called Cobra TV Unlisted is because I feel like if people that follow Cobra TV really want to hear what I really have to say then I feel like they're supporters of the channel. And those are people that that would like to hear some of the some of these things. The general audience that I have uh, is very opinionated and I don't know where people stand. Uh, it seems like people are upset when I upload something not related to No Man's Sky. And then another set of people are upset when I upload something that is related to No Man's Sky. And some of my views are not accepted by uh, sometimes either party. And if you're listening to this video, it's be, it's because you you do follow Cobra TV. Uh, you're not just viewing the video by happenstance and I value your opinion. And this video is uh, not video. Well, it's going to be a video too, but this episode of Unlisted is going to be, uh, it's going to be opinionated. And I want to hear from you because I feel like I feel like uh, I'm the only one. I've been questioning some people about this. And I've asked some other YouTubers. I don't know if they're a little biased because they're playing certain games on their YouTube channel. Uh, and, you know, they're not giving me the their honest opinion about it. Or if it's just been going on for so long that people are just so used to it. And it's the norm. And I'm talking about the AAA gaming industry. Uh, the, 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 oh my gosh. Well, we'll get into that a lot later into this video, but I do want to state that even though this, this show here is unlisted on YouTube and you can only find it here on the website, uh, either way you look at it, if you, if you want to share the video or you want to share the link to the, 
uh, the podcast on the website here, then by all means, go ahead. Please do share it. It's not like it's something that I'm trying to keep secret, but they're just kind of controversial subjects. And I, I value your opinion. And whether you're watching this on YouTube or whether you're watching this on the website or listening to this on the website, I want you guys to comment down below and tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm thinking about this incorrectly because, um, like I said, I value your opinion. And this this is this boggles my mind how uh, you know I, I look around the internet. I, I see a few articles, but it, it doesn't have as much of a following uh, for negativity as No Man's Sky does. And that boggles my mind. There's a double standard going on here. And that's what I want to talk about. And I also want to talk about No Man's Skies as far as, you know, how I truly feel about it uh, to this current day. Uh, because it is a very weird thing uh, how many stages you go through as you're playing the game. But to many people, No Man's Sky has failed their expectations on launch day. It's failed with uh, missing features. Most of them... Uh, just things to be able to look at, you know, like being able to see a bigger dinosaur, being able to see rings around a planet. Um, but some of the bigger things the, to be concerned about are, um, you know, we have uh, being able to see another player at rings, uh, not rings around a planet, but uh, the, the, um, but the relationship that you can build with the factions that, you know, we were told we were going to have. Uh, and, you know, at, at the fact that we could play as a pirate if we wanted to and, you know, how that goes. I mean, it's just a just a way to grind for resources and it doesn't get you into bigger trouble afterwards and doesn't make you like a wanted felon. You don't get any bounties on you. There's no danger in it. Uh, the, the, the pirates are pretty uh, all the ships are pretty easy to take out once you get your ship and everything upgraded. Um, so there's that. Uh, do I like the playing the game? Yes, I do, and there's uh, uh, there, there, there's there's two answers there. I do love playing the game. Have I gotten bored with what is there? Yes, I have. Um, but do I still play it? Yes, I do. We'll get into that a little bit later. But the biggest missing feature I feel uh, in No Man's Sky was being able to see another player because I thought, what a cool idea was that? You know, to create this massive... Uh, universe that is the same for every single person and we've seen that it's exactly the same well not exactly the same but um it, it's pretty darn close you know when the five players met and they did that stream you could see that the rocks are the same the plants are the same uh the things that are different though is the placement of the star in relation to the planet um we're not talking about uh you know i mean some on some of their streams it was rising the sun was rising in the west and setting in the east and on the other people's streams it was rising in the north and but they were all facing exactly the same direction from the point of view of, a, of the same plant looking at the same mountains on the horizon uh the weather times were different they were in completely different time zones as far as uh, day and night so there is differences there but the planet was exactly the same and for a game to be that large I felt like what a really cool concept is that, you know, to to have two people being able to cross this universe or cross the first galaxy that the guys that you guys are in and find each other and stand there and look at each other and just watch a sunset together and know that you are there. That is truly an amazing concept to a video game rather than just having uh, simple matchmaking. That alone, to me, was probably the coolest thing to think about with No Man's Sky other than uh, it was cooler than thinking about going to the center of the galaxy. Um, and a long time ago, you know, on the Cobra TV subcasts and streams, we talked about how uh, it probably just sends you to another galaxy. The only thing that we got wrong about that is that all your stuff breaks and you start over with a broken uh, ship that you have, but with all of your upgrades. So we were correct in thinking that uh, 
you know, just it was just a portal to another place, another, another galaxy. So that that really didn't surprise me. It it kind of did surprise me that it was true. Because I, I, you know, I was thinking all along that I'm probably right, but maybe they're going to do something better because that would kind of be uh, like a troll. Um, and when I found out from somebody, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I found out real early and I'm like, no, oh man, people are not going to like this at all. Um, and, you know, that, that that part sucks. But being able to meet somebody. And and make that journey. And it's a wonderful journey because you have to upgrade on your way there. You have to, um, you know, you're going to be going down to the planets to, to grind for some resources so you can get this and that. If you're taking black holes, you're going to have to go and get some more gold. You know what I mean? It's just, just things like that. So you're going to be playing the game uh, just as you would if you were traveling to the center, but you're actually traveling towards another player who's also coming towards you at the same exact time and as now it stands we know it's possible uh planet towards the center of the galaxy of the euclid galaxy uh was reached by five separate individuals with a common goal to get there and a common goal to get to the same exact uh place on the planet not only was it the same place but it was out of one of the most hardest things to find in the game and that was a portal so I thought that was really, really cool and kind of sucks that they couldn't see each other. However, I do believe that the multiplayer feature was left out because Sean Murray stated in the PlayStation EU magazine that they are going to be implementing or they want to implement a, mm, he he termed it, he coined it No Man's Sky Online, I guess taking a pun and a jab at uh, GTA Online. Uh, he described even further by saying that it was going to be a way to warp to your friend's planet or location and uh and that's that's pretty amazing so your hello games um you know you got problems you know you got a build that isn't ready you know you've already postponed once sony's probably pretty pissed they're probably breathing down your throat they want you to release your game your build's not working so you strip away as many features as you possibly can and you release a uh, a watered down build thinking okay work on that final build let's get it up and let's get it updated within the next three days uh, maybe people will notice maybe we can get it fixed before it's too late the game is released uh, so we did accomplish that so let's get all this stuff ba uh, back in there then all of a sudden the build the, the stripped down build that they had <laughs> it didn't work it as well was crashing and so now they can't put those features back in. Now they have to uh, fix that build. And then they're realizing that the PC uh, release, the PC launch was even worse than the PS4 launch. So now their their plans are foiled to add those that content back in there. And what they probably wanted was to wait on the multiplayer until they had a proper multiplayer system put in place. Why spend the money on renting servers? Why spend the money on setting up servers for just the rare occasion that uh, just a handful of people over the course of three, four months are going to meet up with each other? So I think a lot of things went into play here. I think I think that a lot of things damaged their plans to uh, fixing this game into what it was supposed to be. Uh, I didn't. I don't think they foreseen that they were going to have to repair the light version of the game that they did upload and now that it appears as if there are n there's very little glitches uh in the game nothing the glitches that i do see in the game are, are about the norm for what you see in uh you know games nowadays you know they're not really bad like they were before when it was uh, no man's sky was released on day one so I think right now they, you know, they're updating the internal testing branch like crazy. They're uploading versions to the internal branch and they're testing it. They're playing it. They're seeing how good it is. There was one day, I believe it was updated twice in one day, which tells me they uploaded it. Something didn't work right. So they had to fix it and upload a different version or it worked well and they added something new that day. And But it, it's coming to a point where there is going to be a content update because you can clearly see that they're working on a content update. 
I'm getting way off the topic here. Um, so saying that they're not working is, is, is a little bit stupid if you're not paying attention to the actual Steam app where you can actually see evidence of them working. Ignoring that is just being ignorant. Um, being told that and still and being, no, being told that and being made aware of that and still saying that they're not doing anything is, is ignorant. Um, am I pissed off that they're not talking? Am I pissed off that they're not saying anything? Absolutely. I'm furious. Now, you know, damn well, they're going to be, you know, they're, they're going to get backlash for it. There's going to be a lot of hate. There's going to be a lot of, uh, negative feedback on anything that they possibly say. But there is a group of people out there uh, who have defended their actions, such as myself, which, you know, I did a little bit already, but I, I really, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have because I, I, I feel like they didn't abandon the game, but they abandoned their their consumer um, etiquette, you know, talking to the people. As soon as all of a sudden people started going crazy on them, they just quit talking. That's the part that I cannot support about this whole thing. I can get by with them releasing an unfinished game for $60, and I'm going to tell you why before people start hammering away at the keyboard. I can... I can go ahead and accept the fact they released an unfinished game for $60, but I cannot excuse the fact that they won't talk to people and tell them their 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 plans and address the situation. They're really hurting themselves, and they have, they've hurt a lot of other people. Now, we're going to get into why I'm okay with it being $60 and unfinished in a minute, but... Now, Sean Murray did say that not everything would be possible at launch. And now, that was in 2014 he said that. Um, so is it wrong? Yes and no, in my opinion. It's, it, it's wrong because you didn't reiterate that enough as you were going along. You were taking pre-orders for the game as you were going along. Now you did say that you did. Uh, now they did say that they did cut some key features. I think it was a day before release on their blog website, which I think is wrong. Again, I think a little bit more transparency was needed as far as you know. If you didn't want to show the game, if you wanted to shock and awesome people, that's fine. I get that part, but the transparency and, and information about having to cut some things back and add some things later should have been said a little uh, more. Now, when it comes to why do I think that No Man's Sky for $60 being unfinished, why I think that's that's okay. I not I don't necessarily think it's okay. I think that <laughs> I'm I'm more upset. What I what I really mean by that is I'm upset more that they're not speaking more than I am upset that it's a $60 unfinished game with free updates into the future versus AAA games pay for DLC and season pass games that have a business plan for projected updates that cost you money. That is not a finished game either. Take a franchise that has always done it always done it and I'm a fan of Battlefield and here's where I need your opinion on if I'm seeing this incorrectly because to me it just doesn't seem right Battlefield is fun it has always been a fun game it has always been one of my favorite games but <laughs> let's take Battlefield 1 an amazing amazing piece of art that I want in my house but I am going to refuse to buy it right now. Because what they did, exciting and as fun as it is, they released an unfinished game that has got already planned DLC and a season pass when you go to pick it up day one. If they have a plan of what they're going to be adding to the game and they're already selling it before they do it, 
that game's not done. This is a AAA company that doesn't do games blindly. It's not like they're sitting around one day and they think to themselves, I wonder what else we could add to the game for our lovely fans for DLC. Can we think of anything, guys? No, 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 no. They sit down and they make a game and then they say, what can we hold back? That is exciting for them enough to pay a season pass for. If Battlefield 1 was done, it'd be no DLC or season pass. And if there was, like, okay, you can say the same thing about GTA 5. Was it done when it, when it was released? No, it wasn't. Multiplayer wasn't working. Heist didn't get up and in, into the game for two darn years. It wasn't. But you know what's good about GTA 5 and Rockstar? He'd been giving away all that DLC for free. Yeah, they got the shark cards. Yeah, it's kind of stupid. But that doesn't affect me too much. Even though it's wrong. Because newer players an upper hand on you. But still, all of the content that's supposed to be given to you with the purchase of a $60 game is there, whether you get those shark cards or not. It's all there for you. DLCs are completely free. So when I think about the price and the money that I'm going to have to invest in Battlefield 1, it's more than $60. It's a lot more than $60. And it's always been that way. It's always been like that. And I think that a lot of people find that normal but just because it always has been like that. Or maybe it's because I'm a little bit older and I grew up with games from Atari, then Nintendo, then Sega, then PlayStation, you know, and many other ones in between. We didn't have DLC. I mean, DLC has a place in the form that the way Minecraft has done it updates and the way that GTA has done it. GTA 5 has done it. It has a place. But when you market your games the way Call of Duty, Battlefield 1, and many, 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 many others, it's not right. It's definitely not right to charge a full price for a game that is clearly not done and is clearly out to get more of your money as the time goes by, they're clearly out to get your money when you go pick up the game. Would you like to purchase a season pass? Hmm. Someone commented on my channel, and I, I feel like I'm alone in this. Uh, when I talked about in one of my shows about how I don't, I'm not going to pre-order games anymore. Someone commented on my channel saying it's okay to pre-order games from devs that have proven themselves, such as Call of Duty. Are really? You pre-order Call of Duty, and you get it, you get an early access game with a plan to purchase the rest of it later. And everyone likes to call these expansions is, you know, I've asked some of the, my YouTuber friends, uh, I said, am I seeing this incorrectly? And they said, well, I think you are because as long as the expansions are good, I'd pay the money. Wait a minute. You're paying more money for a full price game. You've already bought. And they're calling it an expansion. And look what Destiny did. I love the game, but look what they did with disc lock content. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, you know, I see comments on No Man's Sky all over the place saying, if No Man's Sky wants to charge a AAA price, then we need to hold them to a AAA standard. Now, Battlefield 1 was released. Clearly not finished. Or a lot of people are going to say, oh, no, it is finished. But they're going to make the game even better, and that's worth paying for. But Battlefield 1 is fun with its unfinished version that it did release. I'll, I cannot deny that. I can't deny it one bit. It's fun. So was No Man's Sky for a little while. Fun. The difference, you know, if, if we want to hold Hello Games to a AAA standard, are we actually saying that we want Hello Games to charge us for the rest of the game. We see these Battlefield games come out all the time and we play them. I've played them. Battlefield 4 is one of, one of my uh, most played games of 2015-2016. We know what happens with them. We know that 
We know what kind of content gets dropped in them. We know more maps get added. We know more modes get added, more guns get added. But yet we don't stop and say, I'm not buying your game until you put all of that into a $60 price. If they were to come out and say, okay, let's go ahead and just put a $110 price tag on the darn thing or $99 price tag on the thing, then fine. Raise the price and call that your AAA price. They're disguising extra fees for a $60 unfinished game. And I know that makes a lot of people mad. And you know what? It makes me mad. People are mad at me for saying that, but I'm mad because I refuse to buy a title that I really want in my home. And I will not buy any more titles that have that kind of marketing practice. That's just me. I'm not trying to say that you need to do that. But when we're comparing No Man's Sky to AAA titles and the supposed AAA full price, $60. Wait, AAA full price, $60 plus season pass. And you know what? You can choose not to buy that season pass or you can choose not to buy the DLC for these games that have that marketing practice. Not all AAA games do have that practice. You know, we've already mentioned Rockstar. But games, you know, you can choose not to buy that. But you're not going to get the full experience out of that game that that developer had in mind for that game. And if you wait, at one point in time, they will give it away for free when, they're, when the game's at its almost end and they're getting ready to come out with the next one. And by then, you haven't enjoyed it online like the rest of your friends have if you're choosing to not support the season pass and dlc marketing but no man's sky hello games has stated that they are going to go forward with the free updates the interview or the article that said that he was naive that's that's i don't know that's probably an older article that someone just decided to show up and create a lot of drama they have stated many times that it's going to be free, even recently. You can go and find it on one of their very few blogs that they have posted since the release of their game. But it's going to be free. $60. And it's not finished. I can't excuse them for their lack of communication to their consumers. But I can say that it's... It's going to get updated if you let it. You know, all of this negativity and, and backlash. You know, you should be going after the big boys who are getting you year after year after year for more money past the $60 price point. That's who you should be mad at. I see people playing No Man's Sky all the time. And if you go uh, look at even in, if it's just some kid. And you look in the comment section, people are putting that person down like he's doing something really super bad. Supporting a lying developer. Are you kidding me? Every developer nowadays. No, sorry. Every is a really bad, bad word to use here. A lot of developers nowadays, especially in triple A, are liars. Con artists. A lot of them. And they're getting away with it. And the same, a lot of the same people that support that type of marketing are the ones that are calling Sean Murray a liar. Can it be seen as being a liar? Yeah, it can. But now that they got the game somewhat, you know, free of bugs, let's go ahead and see what they do from here on out. Let's see what the, they offer us. He released a blog stating that right now, no, he he released a blog stating No Man's Sky is about exploration, but later it'll be about other things. It was also an interview where he stated to a woman, a German uh, journalist, that he knew that in about three weeks people were going to get bored. Look guys, I am just as pissed as all of you, about the condition of the release of No Man's Sky. 
or as uh, Paul Weir puts it, the sound director of uh, No Man's Sky, this version of No Man's Sky, I am I'm I'm upset just like you guys. I've probably pay, played about 250 hours, maybe, and I can't gauge that on the PS4. It's just a guesstimation, and I have reached a point where I'm I'm bored with the game. I've done all there is to do. I know what's at the center. I don't want to go there, and uh, I've come to the realization that there may not be any mystery to the game whatsoever. But there is a reason why some people do play the game that a lot of these negative commenters who are calling me the n-word or calling other people the n-word for playing it which that's just absolutely ridiculous you're a fool that's what you are you're a fool for bringing racism into anything and for you to use it with this it's just flat out ignorant and stupid and ridiculous it's like I don't know man you're a fool. And to harass and hound people for enjoying playing a game, you're not thinking about many, many factors. And one of the biggest factors you're not thinking about is someone who didn't follow the hype train, saw it on a damn shelf, or some kid that's just seen it sitting there on the PlayStation store, and they purchased it. Didn't know anything about it. Thought it was cool at first because they don't know that there's supposed to be rings around a planet. They don't know that you're supposed to see another player they don't know that there were supposed to be large dinosaurs. And they thought they had something really cool to share with the world. And they uploaded it to YouTube. And a bunch of jack wings come by and just put them down for playing the game. It's fucking ridiculous. That's the biggest reason why you're fools. Another reason why people play is because they actually do enjoy it. One of the things that a lot of people don't consider is there's many different types of gamers. Some like to, to yell and troll in online first-person shooters. Which a lot of those people bought the darn game. I don't know why. You were told from the very start it was an ambient experience. We were told from the start there was no story. We were told in the beginning there were no NPCs. And we were okay with that. We were fine with that back then. I think the NPCs in the game are... Execute, executed poorly, and I'd just rather see it taken out. To tell you the truth, I don't even go up and interact with them anymore. But a lot of people do find a way to play the game. Uh, not find a way, but there's a reason why some do play the game. And one of those reasons, you know, here's a post from uh, somebody on Facebook who was taking pictures of their ship, and he's not talking about how he enjoys it due to the missing features or he uh, he's still enjoying the game despite the negative uh, feedback he's not posting anything like that he's excited about what he's doing and his post starts off by saying I'm addicted to ship hunting two days ago I discovered my amazingly retro super sci-fi red racer complete with its own droid named Wilson I thought it was my forever ship but the very next system I visited generated this red white and blue fighter I immediately began the hunt. It took about four hours before I found it. Sorry, Wilson, but I can't resist. I sat with Wilson and we enjoyed a sunset together. He blinked sadly as I climbed into the cockpit and raced away in my new all-American ring-tailed needle-nosed freedom fighter, America. Viking system 9,000 light years from center, yellow star with five planets. He then later... Uh, a few about a week later <laughs> he made another post on Facebook and it said Wilson with a question mark is that you Wilson oh my god it's Wilson my little droid has come back to me I abandoned him a couple of days ago for a sexier starship I felt very guilty about it but it looks like the little booger has hitched a ride in a new ship and tracked me down I hate I hate the ship you chose but yes Wilson I will take you back And of course, he was, you know, there's some pretty negative comments in there, which is just fucking ridiculous. But do you see what the game offers to some people? It does offer something. 
And when I quit playing it for a couple of weeks and I come back to it, there's this renewed feeling that I have. It took me about 200 hours to finally say, I can't do this anymore. There's nothing left to do. You know, I, that that's a long time to be playing a game. I mean, how long of the can how long's the campaign mode for uh, Uncharted Four? What do you do with it afterwards? You know, trade it in, maybe put it on a shelf if it's, if it's a collectible. I don't know. Some people playing the game don't know that Sean Murray promised features that are not in it. They don't know. They don't belong to the Facebook Facebook groups. They don't uh, follow the drama that's all over YouTube where everybody takes a punch and a jab anywhere they possibly can instead of aiming their attention on AAA games that are stealing from them. I wouldn't call it stealing. They're tricking you. Fooling you. Pulling a wool over your eyes and making you pay twice for the game. I've debated whether or not to uh, make a video talking about the positives of No Man's Sky. And I've got a post on Facebook where people are, are posting things and pictures and video clips of strange and odd things that they have found uh, and why they love playing the game still. And it would make a nice video, but every time I, I upload something for No Man's Sky... I am just attacked with a lot of hatred, and I don't get it. Another thing that uh, you know, people are stating that No Man's uh, Hello Games has abandoned their their uh, studio. Now they're millionaires. Do you stay in that piece of crap place? I don't know if they're there or not. There, there's somebody had. Uh, there's there are people that are going by there, taking pictures of the building. One person even went there at night and took pictures inside through the window. Through the window. How creepy is that? <laughs> I don't know, guys. I also am one of the people that do not believe that uh, Hello Games got hacked. I don't believe that. Um, I believe there was a mental breakdown from somebody. We've come to learn that there is someone that lives with Sean Murray, a female. I'm not uh, with his last name. I'm not sure if it's his wife or his mother. Um, but I'm sure she's dealing with a lot of the... Um, crap that Sean Murray's put up with, you know, seeing him go through it. You know, he's a millionaire now. Um, and I, I'm sure that money makes him feel a little bit better. But I'm sure it still hurts. I think somebody broke. <laughs> um, I don't think it was a hack. I often ask myself from time to time if I should go ahead and privatize all the videos where I've repeated things that Sean Murray has said. Because uh, I think it hurts me a little bit. But I'm not going to. Each and every one of those videos was a connection that I made with somebody out there in the world. A uh, friendship that I made with somebody out there in the world. Without those videos, I wouldn't have met all of you guys. I wouldn't have met people that are now part of my personal life. Uh, people that impacted my life and changed my life. So I'm leaving them. I don't care if it makes me look like an idiot or not. They're there. They're staying. I have faith. Hello, games. I have faith. Um, give the people what you told them you were going to give them. It's about as simple as it gets. And uh, all I can say is just don't charge for it, man. Don't. <laughs> you know, people are saying that you need to be held to a AAA standard. Don't take that advice. Don't take that advice and start doing a season pass. I have about said it all I'm going to say. I know a lot of people are probably going to disagree with me, but let me know in the comment section. Just be honest with me. That's all I want is honest. That's just my opinion. It doesn't mean that's what I want you to think. And if you disagree, it's not called an argument. It's just called your opinion. You know, I, I stated my opinion. You're allowed to state your opinion in the comment section. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end it here, guys. <laughs> First episode of Cobra TV Unlisted. Wow. Okay. As always, I do love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. You do mean a lot to me, and so does your opinion. But please do not forget to leave that down below. I will see you guys in the next video, whether public or unlisted. Until next time.